Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review of Dexter New Blood Season 1, Episode 9, The Family Business, and also, dare I say it, the penultimate episode of this uh, season. Why you gotta say stuff like that? This has been a really good season. I'm not gonna pretend that the show hasn't had a few problems, but overall, this has been so great to have this back, and I really like this episode. I thought this episode did a lot of really cool stuff, and it surprised me in a couple legitimate ways. I mean, obviously, there are a bunch of spoilers ahead, so I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I did not expect Kurt Caldwell to kick the bucket in this episode. No. I thought they were keeping him around until the finale. Yeah, me too. That was a surprise. And some of the stuff that I really loved about the original Dexter, they brought back into this. Like some of the weird, like, dark comedy. Like having Dexter wearing a clown nose before he kills somebody. Look, it was so good. <laughs> There's so much I gotta say about this clown stuff. We are going to clown around here, everyone. But hit that subscribe button so that you can continue to hang out with us. Check out yeah. all of our Dexter coverage. We'll be back, of course, to talk about the finale. And we are yeah. in the midst of discussing Cobra Kai. We're doing a couple episode reviews of that a day. Yeah, there is a lot going on. I mean, next week is going to be really busy yeah. here at the channel as well. We're going to have NCIS, Blacklist is back, This Is Us is back. Like, yeah. th There's a lot happening. So yeah, hit that subscribe button. Okay, well, maybe maybe you can help me sort of deal with all of my emotions about this clown stuff that we kind of saw oh. alongside Harrison. Because I... I'm not somebody who's actually afraid of clowns. I know no. that's a very big thing that a lot of people mm -hmm. are, but I'm fine with all of that. But the thing is, as much fun and weird and wacky as this whole clown stuff was that eventually, you know, we saw leading up to Dexter putting another person on his table, I feel like we it was a little similar to Killing Eve for me. Like, everything that happened in Killing Eve where we saw Villanelle in the clown outfit, like, that was the only thing that kept entering my mind. So I see some similarities. I see that. But it was also... Like, they had some very quick sort of subtle things in there that was really creepy, that really put a pit in my stomach. Like, finding those pictures in a lunchbox yeah. that said, ride em, cowboy, I oh. just, my stomach turned. That was... That was a really good one for Dexter to be using to sort of as the example to be talking to Harrison about. Like, if you're going to go and tell somebody, hey, by the way, I do this, you yeah. got to pick some of the worst of the worst. And this guy was awful. Yeah. And I thought how the show did this was really effective, too, because it could have just been a lot of talking. And I think... Yeah. For it being the second to last episode, I don't think anyone necessarily wants to sit there. And as much as we love Michael C. Hall, having to just watch him narrate his story to Harrison for like five or ten minutes could have been a little bit dry. So they showed us instead of just telling us. Yeah, I was really thankful to sort of kind of be put back at that time in his life when he was doing that in a different way. And he was really sort of right in the thick of everything. And he decides at that point to tell Harrison almost everything. He tells him quite a bit about the code, but doesn't tell him that he actually kills people. And he decides to sort of tell him that he scares people, to which I was kind of like, oh no, he's kind of setting up Harrison for a fall because if Harrison ever tries to do something like that and then at the end of it is like okay you've learned your lesson I'm gonna undo all this and let you go to someone who's a killer like Harrison is dead it's such a interesting sort of way that we went on this journey with Dexter because yeah. Deb was there trying to hold him back trying to keep him from explaining everything and it's sort of like I get I get the role of Deb very much throughout all of this, where Dexter wants to still, like, preserve a certain element of, I guess, what he believes to be Harrison's humanity. But at the same time, it all kind of felt like we knew where this was going the whole time, because you can't, you can't half measure this. You can't just sort of say, oh, I do all this other stuff, and then I just send them out into the free world. It just yeah. doesn't work. No, it doesn't. But, I mean, I kind of, like, I understand where Dexter's coming from. He yeah. doesn't know his son that well. He's going to have to admit that he kills people. He's already admitted to all these other crimes to someone that he's not that close to. He's been closer to a lot of other people, and he hasn't admitted that either. Like, it's... It's not an easy place to be to be like, and we end it with 
killing it's it's tough i get where he's coming from let's get into christmas here because it's christmas in the jim Lindsay household and that means exchanging gifts here you go harrison here's a gun at least he did not shoot his eye out he has at least that going for him no and dexter basically gave him his own dexter shirt to go kill in and was sort of like listen here's a lesson yeah. you need to blend in and that really is part of the code but it's all about Harrison's gift back. That drawing of death. Yeah. Oh my God. So good. I loved it. There was so much that I loved about this yeah. episode. But Th that moment was like, it really got me. That was probably the most beautiful moment of the entire episode because just Dexter's reaction and how Michael sort of played it, that he was taking it all in. And, you know, Dexter's not a particularly vulnerable guy. No. So to actually see him be legitimately moved by that and i think it was one of the first times he really realized oh i actually i have my son like this is someone who is here for me and respects me and cares about me even if he hasn't put all of his cards on the metaphorical table at this point no i think that this relationship is really like we've seen throughout you know the past seasons where Dexter has talked about the fact that he just he can't feel he fakes all his emotions he really wants to care he's gotten very good at pretending that he cares about people and in his own way I think he does care but he just hasn't had that connection where he feels real care but I feel like in the last episode, that moment with the hug, there yeah. was a moment where Dexter's face, just like he shut his eyes for a second and you could see it kind of wave over him that he got that feeling. And you see a little bit of it still kind of coming through in this episode as well. We eventually see Dexter and Harrison put on their big old Christmas sweaters, which That's so funny. I feel like I'm missing out. I've never had a big ridiculous Christmas sweater like this, but apparently if, I, if I'm friends with Jim Lindsay, I'll get one. So yeah. I'll keep that in mind. So they go over to see Angela and Audrey. And this is where like one of my first big questions of this episode comes up because like Angela is like really really distant through a lot of this meeting i feel like you know she doesn't want dexter to kiss her on the lips she's kind of sitting kind of a little bit further away from him on the couch it's like all these different signs and dexter mr perspective perceptive you know blood splatter analyst he doesn't really seem to notice that anything is awry here i'm okay with it because I feel like Dexter's mind is really on his son, but it's also on blending in and continuing the status quo and continuing on that he's, you know, with everything that's going on, that everything is a-okay. <laughs> it's part of the code. The thing that I'm the most surprised about is that Angela's with him anymore like that lie and i understand that she called in i don't need jim i need dexter morgan yeah. okay that's fine but you don't have to be with him anymore and he's lied about who he is and even with his explanation like i don't know how that relationship honestly is still going on and the fact that she's got all these concerns why hasn't she just broken up with him like it feels like she should have and would have even if she's like oh i'm investigating into him yeah she's not using that roadway right now she's looking things up in other ways yeah and that's that's the big point here because you we, we can't make that argument that oh she's you know with him because she's using him because like you said she's not and i don't understand this part of it either with angela she's got every reason in the world to want to break up with Dexter at this point, it would be totally believable. Not only that, but he's basically just like ditching you for like the entirety of Christmas Day. And I understand wanting to spend time with his son and all of that. But if this was just a normal, non-weird relationship involving a serial killer, I would still think that's a little bit off if I'm Angela. And it's like, oh, this guy probably doesn't care about me that much. Yeah, I mean, her 
probably real worry is just if he's actually a killer, if I break up with him, is he going to kill me kind of <laughs> yeah. thing. But I mean, I, I don't know. I think she probably would have broken up with him if this was real life, but this is TV. So Yeah, I just feel like there's some missing elements on the show right now that could clue us into some stuff. Like I wanted to yeah. see a scene of maybe Angela and Dexter like quote unquote reconciling so that we can at least understand how they're still together, why they're still in this spot. Yeah, so we have Angela who is digging into more of Dexter's sort of figured out more about the puncture wounds in the neck <laughs> yep. and listening to Molly's podcast. And as she was listening to us, like, why isn't she just picking up the phone and calling her? Like, they know each other. And she does, picks up the phone. Oh, she's checked yep. out of the hotel. I was kind of surprised to see that Angela then decided to go over to the hotel like there's something suspicious about it because angela was kind of like we're done here yeah. with molly and you know it's christmas time why would molly be sticking around it's christmas time she may have gone back home like to be with her family i didn't think it was that suspicious to go over and check in on her angela bishop has a superpower and that superpower is being able to apparently like read into things that no other human really fully would like that or apparently like you know connecting dexter to the bay harbor butcher it's like these things are a little bit of a stretch i think honestly but the show keeps having this character do them however i will say this angela you do not need to be sitting at the computer with the podcast like screen in the background for you to listen to you can take the podcast on the go it's it's so weird that they keep doing this almost like they don't think that we're gonna understand what she's doing if we just hear molly's voice it's like okay obviously she's listening to the podcast i will admit that i sit at my computer and listen to podcasts i listen to the roberto blake podcast sitting at the computer so i kind of get it i mean i get that most people don't do that but you know i I'll, I'll give that a pass as well because there's some things that we're gonna get to that i am not <laughs> able to give a pass on okay yeah we let's start to dive into now everything with kurt because this is where things really get fully completely insane it starts you know kurt shows up uninvited to angela's place for christmas they have that little scene and all this eventually Dexter and Harrison are like, oh, we got to go on a hike to look at the stars and freezing cold temperatures on Christmas. And eventually they discover the compound. Yeah. And while they're over there discovering all of Kurt's secrets, Kurt is over at Dexter's house burning it to the ground because <laughs> yeah. he's hoping that they're going to run out and he's going to be able to have his runaway moment with them. And they don't fit what he's been doing and we will get into that and a lot of the things he's been doing like molly doesn't really fit in yeah. with what kurt was been doing harrison not not a runaway he was running to his dad he's in town to reconcile with his family it doesn't really fit it dexter definitely doesn't fit it i mean it's things are going off the rails for kurt let's be honest <laughs> you're gonna be in a small town and you're gonna go over and commit arson and burn down this house which miraculously did not yeah. touch one tree yeah. around there but it burned to the ground yeah yeah this is a very dexter was very architecturally sound with this uh, cabin that it would not cause any larger fires okay so we're gonna we're gonna get into a bit of the a bit of mortician talk okay. so for those of you who don't know i'm a former funeral director i'm licensed in embalming i have a lot of experience at this yeah i actually spent most of my time in the morgue embalming so i understand that this is a tv show and i understand that they're going to take some liberties with it yeah and especially when it comes to something like this not a lot of people really know what the embalming process does so i'm gonna take kind of a minute here to talk to you guys about it because the liberties that this show took sitting on sort of the idea that uh, an audience who doesn't have someone in their life or has never actually sat down with their funeral director and have had to bury someone usually at least in canada you have to explain what the embalming process is to families so that they understand what is gonna happen and what it actually does because 
we saw Kurt yeah. have these like rows of women perfectly preserved for years, yeah. years. That is impossible. That's not going to happen. Not even uh, like the process of embalming is to slow down, a, you know, a body from decaying and decomposing. That's what it's to do. It is not to stop it. There is no stopping it. Mm -hmm. It's like and even if I'll give it the benefit of the doubt that these containers were refrigerated, let's call that as yeah. well, that they're embalmed they're in refrigeration refrigeration also only slows that down let's let's say you buy a head of lettuce and yeah. you buy two heads of lettuce so you leave one on the counter it's gonna just decompose and turn into mush you put the yeah. other one in your crisper in the fridge yeah if you go back a year later it is not going to be a head of lettuce that yeah. is in good shape it is also going to have decomposed because refrigeration only again slows it down it doesn't stop it yeah i was like waiting for a couple of those bodies because we know he's been doing this for 25 years yeah. even if he's only been doing the embalming part for a year <laughs> let's yeah. call it that yeah and these bodies are not going to look like that it's just it's impossible it's not going to happen so that's a, a little bit of a science <laughs> lesson on what would really be happening if you walk down there they wouldn't look like that maybe only molly yeah, that's actually the question I was about to ask you because, you know, Molly, it seems like that's pretty recent. So Molly probably... Sure, okay. if he did like a really like intense embalming that take like a six hour embalming where you're taking it real slow and you're trying not to like, you know, burn all the capillaries and like, you know, burn, you can burn the skin. Like you've got to like take your time. Sure, if he's that experienced, he's going to take that much time. Yeah, Molly's going to look like that. But the person from yeah. years ago, it doesn't matter how much time you put into it it's not going to look like that yeah and, and see i i don't come from a background of funeral service so i mean i didn't the alarm bells didn't immediately go off as much yeah. in my head but and that's why i think that they were like oh we can kind of get away with this uh you know pretend land where people <laughs> don't decompose ever I will stay. I, I did at least still have a couple of questions here about some of the older people that were still in there because I kind of thought eventually I didn't necessarily know it would be at the pace you're talking about. But it is a leap that this show is taking. It's a little bit weird. Also, all of the Olsen theories are apparently out the oh. window. This dude is just not important at all. No, it's so weird. Like, yeah. what happened there with this Olsen character? Yeah. I, I was thinking or hoping that he was connected in some way. Yeah. I kind of thought that maybe Kurt was embalming people and giving them to Olsen. Yeah. Olsen might be like, if there is another season, the next sort of problem, because yeah. that's also a real creep show. But like, where is he? I don't know. I, uh, maybe, maybe Olsen was just the figment of all of our imaginations and he was never actually a part of this show. It's too bad. I think there's kind of a missed opportunity there. Yeah, there, there, there really is. So we eventually... Kurt, you know, shows up at the compound with Dexter and Harrison. And then, you know, inevitably, Kurt ends up at the table. And we see just this really kind of powerful exchange here between mm -hmm. Dexter and Harrison, where Dexter's trying to make sure Harrison is okay yeah. to be there. And this, I think, is so, so well done. And no offense to Kurt or anything else. I do not care it was Kurt. It could have been anybody at that table. Yeah. But it was, I think, such a illuminating moment where Harrison fully understands what's going on is completely okay with it and just the way that he says to Dexter this means that you know you've saved probably so many oh, lives so I, good. Uh, no it was so good it was so well done all the Dexter Harrison stuff was so so good yeah. like the the back and forth between them the looks between them even when they're not saying something like and that moment where sort of the blood is coming closer to harrison i'm glad that they had that moment for harrison where he was like i need a minute yeah. i i wanted to see him have that minute where he was kind of like I, I just need a second that even if you think you're prepared yeah and you're ready for this that you need a moment. I mean, that even happened with me in funeral service the first time that I had to embalm someone who was autopsied. I was like, I need a minute. Like, it's pretty intense. And it was good that they also still, you know, showed 
Harrison's trigger because of everything that happened, yeah. you know, with Trinity. Yeah. I think it's something that is going to live with him. It doesn't matter if he admires Dexter for what he does, if he doesn't admire Dexter at all. It's like there are certain things that people like Harrison will never be able to fully escape. I love, love, love that Dexter told Harrison that he took care of Trinity and yes. Trinity is dead and Trinity is not out there to give his son that kind of peace to be like, I took care of it. Your dad took care of it. He is not out there. He did not get away with it. it I think that that's something that's going to really help Harrison going yes. forward to have sort of that peace where he was like, man, I've had all these like fantasies and dreams of like killing Trinity that he, you know, he shouldn't be out there to, for him to be like, I have taken care of it. I want you to know that he is not out there. It was such a bold, interesting move to have this be the end of Kurt yeah. at this particular point so that now the show isn't so much about, okay, here is this obvious big bad that was right in front of us that was doing this terrible stuff who freaking, you know, burned down Dexter and Harrison's place who... This is my sort of comp now. We talked about the M.O. a little bit earlier yeah. with Kurt. Yeah. For everyone who remembers Two-Face from Batman, who would flip the <laughs> coin and he would do whatever the coin suggested, yeah. this is Kurt at this point basically flipping the coin 200 times until it gives him the answer that he wants. It's like, okay, it meets my M.O. now. I'm going to yeah, go know. kill them. I know. <laughs> no, okay. So we also have to talk about, you know, Kurt's last sort of stand here yeah. where he wrote a letter to Angela. I know it's not signed, but it's him. He's the one who had the rods. So he put that Jim Lindsay killed, you know, his son and put the two, you know, rods yeah. that were in his son's leg in the envelope. So, I mean, where... <laughs> Where do we go with this? Because right now, all Angela has is this letter that is not signed. So it yeah. could be from anyone. I assume it is from Kurt since he had the rods. Yeah. And then these two rods with the serial number that will go to Matt. But that could have been put in there by anyone. So we'll see if they're fingerprints. Yeah. Something, something connecting it. Yeah. How careful was Kurt? Like, that's going to be a fun thing to sort of look at. And, you know, I love that we, you know, we talk about Trinity. The show talked about Trinity. Like, this sort of reminded me a lot of the end of season four where, you know, even when the big bad is dispatched, they still had, like, yes. this one, you know, final salvo that they're throwing at Dexter. And this all leads now to, this is my finale theory, everybody. This is what could happen it should happen if you guys want to do a season two. Okay, you can't kill Dexter. Like, let's make that very, very clear. I'm not advocating for that. But if you arrest Dexter, if you just get him behind bars, you can find a way to get him out of prison in another season. You could have a quote-unquote satisfying ending where you say, okay, he's being punished for his crimes, but you fully leave the door open because for some reason Showtime does not want to announce if they're doing more of this or not. For me, yeah, I have liked the Angela character. There's things that I've really liked since she's been getting into the Bay Harbor Butcher stuff. Th it's been so thin of her reasoning and why she's deciding to go to different places or Googling, you yeah. know, one drug when the Bay Harbor Butcher used another, but it's popping up all these answers. Like, it feels like the Angela character is good and she should be able to figure this stuff out. But the writing for how she's been figuring it out hasn't really held enough water for me. So Angela being the person to arrest Dexter, if Lundy didn't do it and mm -hmm. couldn't do it, it can't be Angela. It just doesn't feel like it'll be satisfying enough. I'll be fine with it, but it, you know, there's there's cops that were way more yeah. versed in this that should have been able to get there and didn't and then it's going to be angela however yeah. i actually don't think she's going to end up arresting him okay i think that harrison is going to end up killing angela and i know that angela doesn't really fit the code but i think because harrison still needs to you know he's been part of one yeah. thing of the code I think he knows he needs Dexter. So I think if he can protect his dad and if she's going to try to arrest him and she's the, she hasn't really told anybody. So if Angela goes, it all goes away. I think that that will be Harrison's first kill. 
that could also set the stage for like a really interesting season too, where it's like, okay, they kill Angela and then they're like, oh bleep, we can't be in Iron Lake anymore. And yeah. the two of them just take off somewhere else. Okay, they can't be in Iron Lake anymore anyways. <laughs> like there's just been so much like smoke and fire, yeah. literal fire. His cabin's burned to the ground. He's killed, you know, Kurt. He's killed Matt. I mean, there's so many things that have <laughs> yeah. happened. His time there is done. <laughs> okay, well, our time here is done, but we will, of course, want to know from you guys, where do you think Dexter New Blood is going to end? Is Dexter getting arrested? Is Harrison going to kill Angela? Give us your own interesting theories. We love hearing this stuff. And subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our finale discussion, any of our Cobra Kai reviews. Yes. Thank you so much. We will see you here next time.